Welcome to By the Numbers. My name is Renee Smith. And I'm Michelle Fleming. Can you guess what we're going to talk about today, Michelle? Here's a um, hint. Time, maybe? I think so. We're going to talk about telling time and using the clock. Oh, I'll tell you what. Kids don't see analog clocks like this anymore. Well, except in school. Except in school. And so it is still a skill that we need to help them with. And, and on state assessments. Well, let's not talk about that. Okay. Okay, but let's talk about what we can do really inexpensively to help them. And kids really kind of like this because it's so simple to make, but it's something that they can actually move and manipulate. So we because have, we don't see very many of these even in people's in, in people's in homes. homes anymore. Right. I have one in my whole home. I think that's analog. I think you're one more than I am. Okay. You have okay. all digital. I think we're all digital. Okay. Well, so anyway, um, all I have here is a paper plate, and on it we have attached to it a paper clock face that we will have on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a large bobby pin and a small bobby pin. That's all we have that, okay. we, that we've used to make this So clock. the large bobby pin represents the minute hand. Right. And the small one represents the hour hand. Absolutely. So it's really important that you have two that are different, are different size. lengths. Yes, right. Different lengths. So basically what we did here is we... Oh, we're going to take it apart. We're going to take it apart. And reassemble. Right. And show how it was done. So we have paper plate with a hole in the center. I guess I should hold that some way so people can see it. And then same thing with the uh, clock face. And obviously this one's a little bit worn. And then you just take the bobby pin and if you can see the holes, <laughs> they aren't lined up. Now they are. And slide it through and then take the other one and slide it through. And I'm, this little bobby pin has been used so much I'm gonna slide it under the, hour, the minute hand so that it'll kind of hold it better. And then you can just practice with kids uh, setting it and then telling what the time is. And we, we would suggest that for the first, for the first um, experiences with kids with a clock, that we do just on the hour, okay. on the whole hour. So you would go, Wow. well, don't do 12, do 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. So that we okay. would show that the hour hand was pointed towards the 1 and the minute hand was on the 12. And then we could just go around and 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock and so on and skip around and that's 8 o'clock, do whole hours. Mm -hmm. And then what, what do you think we do next? I do half hours. I would do half hours as well. So at the half hour, we're going to move the minute hand down to the 6, but we're going to have to make sure that we move, if it's going to be 8.30, that, that that hour hand has also moved as well. That's important for kids yeah. to know because oftentimes they get confused when it's not directly at the 8. Like if we look at a real clock, you know, we are at two, um, to almost 225, and you notice the hour hand has moved from the two, and it's on its way to getting to the three. Right, and so kids need to see that this isn't really 830. By now, that hour hand would have moved about halfway mm -hmm. to the nine as well, because that's where they really start to get confused. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Next, I would do, um, after we do half hours, we're going to do in 15-minute intervals, and I would talk about the different ways we talk about um, 815. We don't always say 815. Sometimes we say a quarter past eight. And or a quarter after eight. Or a quarter eight. after eight. And a lot of kids get confused about that because typically when they think about quarters, kids think about money. And so in, a, in money, a quarter is 25 cents. And this is only 15 minutes. And I think one way we can do that real quickly, just to, I'm going to take it apart again, Okay. is without going completely into the whole fractional piece, but when we're talking a half hour, we, folded we it. have folded it in half, so the six is now at the half hour. When we're talking quarter after or quarter till, till a quarter of this circle is now at the three, six, and nine, or it's 15 minutes. Of time, so that's where the quarter comes in versus the quarter in in money, in money, which is twenty five cents. Different understanding Absolutely. of the quarter. So, so you can do all of those things with as simple uh, as a paper plate, a piece of paper, and two bobby, two bobby pins. pins, and kids can manipulate and work on telling time, and or even elapse time. Elapse time after that. So there you go. Okay. What do you think? I think it sounds like a quick way to, instead of going out and purchasing a clock, or of course it's, it is nice to have the real clock so but you can see. But they can't manipulate they it They can't very well. manipulate it, but it does nicely show how the 
the hands move. Hands are moving and how the hour hand is moving even though it's very slowly. Right. But I think if we could if they can manipulate it and they can actually see it how it works together, it's going to sure help them when they get into school where they are expected to be able to read an analog clock versus a digital. Right. So, well thank you for joining us in another episode of By the Numbers. And you can find out more information about this episode and others on My Kids Turn.